Dr. Timothy Leary has been described as being either a prophet or a fiend. He is the dominant figure in the current uproar on the use of LSD. In 1963, he was fired from the Harvard faculty for involving undergraduates in his experiments with drugs. In March of this year, he was arrested for smuggling marijuana in from Mexico, is presently appealing that 30-year jail sentence. A man very much in the news, here is Dr. Timothy Leary. It is true that LSD uh, provides an ecstatic experience. It, it gives you an incredibly pleasant experience. But this pleasure is not the pleasure that you get from a, a bottle of beer or that you get from watching even a good television show. The pleasure you get from uh, LSD is being tuned in. You're turned on to your own nervous system. You're turned on to uh, your own body. You're turned on to the incredible wisdom which lies inside every cell in your body. But uh, this is a new form of energy. I'm in the unfortunate position of being about 20 years ahead of my time. Now, whenever you're 20 years ahead of your time, you're in a risky position because it always takes one generation for uh, a new form of energy to be accepted. And I'll say to your uh, viewers, uh, within 10 or 15 years, psychochemicals which expand consciousness and accelerate the mind and open up uh, the wisdom that's inside will be just as common as books are today. And when your kid comes home from school, you won't say to him, what book did you read today? Uh, you'll say, uh, which molecule did you use to open up which Smithsonian Institute or which uh, Library of Congress uh, exists inside your own mind? If good health, longevity, and the social future are of interest to you, I believe what I have to say here will be of interest also. I want to introduce a remarkable new drug to the public and make a few intriguing claims about it. In 2012, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration approved a new chemical for public consumption, and it is now on the market and available through medical prescription. The drug is trade named Belvique, and it has a specific action in the brain. It is the only FDA approved medicine in history, so far as I know, with a clean and specific action in the brain. Belvique is 21st century brain science in action. The section of the brain that Belvique targets is important and intriguing. Serotonin has long been understood to play a central role in mood, appetite, and the qualities of experience and consciousness common to human beings. Chemicals that amplify signals in the serotonin section of the brain have long been known for their psychoactive effects. Examples of these chemicals include LSD, psilocybin, dimethyltryptamine, mescaline, and MDMA. It goes without saying, I think, that none of these chemicals has been approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for public consumption and use. But Belvique has been approved because it acts very precisely on a subsection of the serotonin system. Its psychedelic properties are vanishingly small to non-existent. But Belvique's effect and presumed effect on appetite for unhealthy foods, on neurotic impulses and cravings, on sleep and insomnia, on psychosomatic disorders like fibromyalgia, and in general on something that the ancient philosopher Aristotle called ethical continents are not small at all. They are robust and remarkably positive. When taking Belvique, people with all kinds of unhealthy food addictions and cravings suddenly find themselves not only to able to resist these impulses, but to enjoy doing so. On Belvique, the human being not only finds himself or herself able to resist making poor behavioral and food choices, but to enjoy doing it. Belvique appears to be a form of willpower in a bottle. And the kind of willpower turned on by the drug is the good kind of willpower. Belvique appears to be the chemical version of the moral 
or ethical will. On Belvique, to paraphrase Socrates, the ancient philosopher who stands at, the, at one of the roots of the Western ethical and moral tradition, on Belvique, a man knows the good, he loves the good, and spontaneously and out of himself, he does the good. That's quite a scientific discovery, don't you think? But there's more to the story. The brain learns from Belvique. After practicing with Belvique for a few weeks, one finds oneself able to make the appetitive distinctions that the drug suggests without having the drug in the system. Individuals will vary here, of course. There is evidence that chronically obese people, because of the chemicals they have taken in through bad food choices, have suffered real damage in the appetitive part of the brain. People with that kind of brain damage may require a sustained use of Belvique to manage their appetitive impulses. But for the rest of us, an occasional chemical reminder may be sufficient to make ethical decisions easy. Who knows? Someday, brain science may develop a pill that counteracts or augments any of a number of other moral or ethical dispositions. Maybe someday there will be a pill for arrogance or a pill for sex obsession. For now, though, it would appear that a pill for obesity and the comorbidities of being overweight, things like diabetes and prediabetes, high blood pressure and high cholesterol and sleep disorders is a major step toward a social future in which human happiness and human flourishing, the aim and objective of the ancient philosophers, is the norm and not merely a dream. 